Hello, I'm Carrington Clark, and welcome to Your Career. On today's episode, we're going to be focusing on the all-important issue of networking. Head on the show, we're going to find out what to do when you're in the running for a new job, you think you're going to do pretty well, and then get that silent treatment. And we speak to a whiskey connoisseur who has turned his passion into its very own brand. But first, with the pace of change accelerating and business becoming increasingly global and reliant on new ideas, contacts and strategies, it is even more important than ever to have a strong network. But how do you become an effective Networker, keyword effective there. My guest today will explain what networking is and more importantly, what it isn't. Hint, it has nothing to do with collecting business cards or trying for a record number of LinkedIn connections. Disappointing for some of us. Welcome to you, Julia Palmer, CEO of the Business Network Networking Academy, to Frank Kennedy of the Australian Graduate School of Management at the University of New South Wales. Well, let's start with that as the opener. A lot of people think networking today is being driven by digital disruption. It's, a, it's about making those contacts online with people you wouldn't otherwise be just running into in the street. It's a great, uh, great skill, a great attribute to be able to go out and find people that you would otherwise wouldn't be able to come into contact with. Is that a, is that a fair aim? Are these digital platforms that we see, Julia, are they helpful when you're actually trying to do proper old school networking? Okay, uh, so the digital realm or the technology has really helped us to open up the world, obviously, um, but it means that we've got more access, wider access, um, and it's more competitive. So mm. it depends what you're actually doing, because when it comes to traditional networking um, and the network that you create, it's not necessarily the best way to harness a network, and it certainly doesn't really represent your network, because most of these connections aren't deep enough and aren't real enough. So technology is great, but as I always say to my clients, it's not a relationship, it's a communication right. method. So Frank, is, is the idea there to use the digital platforms, to use your LinkedIn account, to go through social media, to make the initial contact, but then you need to do some face-to-face -face contact, you need, to get, you need to get in contact with them in person in order to actually form a relationship that's actually beneficial? A absolutely, and further to what Julia was saying, the digital network allows you to do the research. Okay. So you get some insight and you're able to be a little bit more strategic. But effectively, all you're doing there is creating a, a connection. So unless you build up some value, some trust, and then have that opportunity to engage face to face, mm. that's almost like a headline, but where's the substance? Frank, sometimes the, the term networker can always be derogatory. Mm. There's such a little networker, it kind of implies that somebody's only out to get something for themselves. They're not actually about forming personal relationships, they're out there trying to manipulate a situation to their own end. Is that, is that a criticism that's just built into Australian culture? Is that something that people should be putting in the past? Is it fair enough that if you're forming a relationship you're doing it for your own aim? I think that if you go in with a motivation of getting something out of the network, that's going to be incredibly transparent. Okay. So what happens then is people do view you as manipulating or um, driving an ego or driving a specific agenda. The reality is if you're a net contributor to a network as opposed to a net extractor, you're seen as being valuable and influential. And that means you downplay. You expect, you expect an outcome for your generosity of effort as opposed to expecting and demanding an immediate benefit. So that's a very interesting point. When, you, when you're trying to, to figure out who you need to know mm. in order to, to get that next step in your career, mm. in order to broaden your skill sets, most of the time you're focused on what can I get out of them. I want to be aiming higher than I already yeah. am and therefore form a relationship that's going to be immediately beneficial. Yeah. Is that the wrong way to do it? The first thing to know is it's too late to build a relationship when you need it most. Right. So if people are tapping in for one-way connections and one-way reasons, then of course that's not going to be sustainable. Um, to your point about the whole word of networking, I totally agree it's got a negative connotation in Australia and that's because you get these people that are just wanting something. Mm. So um, for a network to be viable, and so I'm interchanging between networking and network, so explaining that networking is the activity, network is the result. I can tell you that here in Australia people don't like networking, right? They don't like going out and doing that, um, but they do want a network. And so my job is actually to help them bridge that and be more strategic because if you're going networking and you're not meeting the right people, you're not having the right conversations, then of course it's not going to work. However, if you are doing it with some structure and strategy, then of course those relationships become two-way 
and then you start to see that ripple effect. So we talk about influence mm. uh, and we talk about people promoting you and, and helping each other. That's the value of a network and that can only happen with real two-way relationships. You, that was a very interesting point that by the t if, you're, if you're looking for to network you've, you've kind of missed the boat. You should have already been doing it in the past yeah. because by then it's too late yeah. and it becomes too, too apparent. But there's all the, there's this whole uh, culture industry now around networking events where people apparently <laughs> they throw together groups of people in the similar field and then they yep. try to make them force relationships like speed dating but for careers. Yeah. Do they have any benefit? Because they seem to always be this kind of forced environment where people are desperately trying to sell themselves. Is there any benefit in actually going to these sort of things? Look. I'm a networking trainer and so I pretty much focus on how you behave at these things and at the end of the day there are about a thousand professional networks out there or associations right so these I are guess actual groups that you sign up to uh, yeah and there's one for every industry and every hobby every interest everything so I guess the, the big picture is yes they are valuable because they bring like-minded people together okay. how each individual one is run and managed of course that comes down to that organization yes I do see value in belonging to the right networks and I do see value in going and connecting with your peers and your professional, um, I guess, uh, industry, mm. because that's where you gain knowledge. That's the knowledge that you bring back and you use as benchmarking for your organisation. So um, I do think that people need to be very, very kind of thoughtful and deliberate how they do it. Um, but going back to your comment on the whole speed thing, I mean, avoid the games, avoid the putting yourself in a situation where it's awkward. Again, none of that works. At the end of the day, it's a very small world and everyone knows everyone, so we need to be very careful. Yeah, uh, just, just a part of that, that concept of networking and how individuals who don't feel socially comfortable and right. find it difficult to network, by going to networking events, you practice those skills, and often you can do so in a safe environment. In other words, you've got nothing at stake. Mm. It's an opportunity to just walk up to people and get a little bit of insight. Mm. Now, if you really want to make impact, then you've done your research before. You use social media or you use your connections to identify who you want to meet, who's, who will be critical. Mm. And, and therefore create a scenario or situation to meet that. But all the other events, great experience and great for building confidence. Does that, do you risk, though, by doing too much research, creeping somebody out <laughs> by knowing a little bit too much about what their job is, who they are, where they've been? Does that sometimes backfire if they think you're a little bit too eager as opposed to it just being a natural conversation where you're just interested in what they have to say? I, th I think you have to be genuine and authentic. So the information that I may gather uh, I might use that in terms of starting a conversation. But at the same time, if I'm not on the same page as the person that I'm speaking to, I, I don't understand their world, I don't understand okay. their environment, then I've just broken that opportunity to build rapport. So it's not so much in how much research I do, it's how I deliver that back in the, in the engagement. The other thing you've got to remember is most, well, like we're creatures of habit, so we stick to comfort zone. So most of my clients tell me that when they go to these things, they pay tens of thousands of dollars for membership, sponsorships, hospitality, and their staff stick to each other. Right. Yes. So the purpose of the planning and the purpose of the research is actually want. to know why you're there. Okay. And you need to get out of comfort zone because otherwise you're going to waste two hours of your time or two days of your time if it's a Conference mm. and a whole heap of money. Can we talk about the, what the, 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 the symbiotic relationship, if you will, that you're trying to build? You, you spoke about before the fact that you, you, if you're obviously trying to get something out of it, it's going to be transparent and obviously that's going to be off-putting. What are you trying to give the other person who you potentially need for your career uh, progression or you need for a contact or whatever it might be? in order that they're willing to spend the time with you? Is it ego-driven? Do you need to be showing them that you're really interested in what they have to say and, and feed, feed their ego, if you will? Or is it about giving them something else back? What do they want to be getting from you? Feeding ego is really short term. So my view is that what people would expect is how do you add value by either giving me some new knowledge that is valuable or helping me connect information that I see things in a different perspective. So it's that diversity view. The second is them being a broker. How can you connect me right. to somebody else who that can help me solve important. a problem? Well, no. Okay, no. There may be an element of that in the short term, but the long term is connect me to somebody who solves a problem or creates an opportunity for me. Then you become the go-to person. Okay, so your networking skills in themselves 
can be helpful to, to that relationship That's when right. used and, on other people. And your network yeah. is helpful. The other thing that I think is interesting, I want to compare this, this is obviously what we're using, networking we use in a kind of corporate sense. One of the other growth industries in the last, say, five years has been pick-up artists and books and yeah. this idea of when you're going into a new situation, how you, you best get the result that you were looking for. Are the skills similar? Is it a similar totally. skill set when you're going yes. out into a corporate event as when you're trying to pick someone up? Okay, so I've been told it is. Okay. So um, I okay. teach, I teach okay. connections and relationship skills, right? So everything's based on psychology, neurology and science of connections. So of course it's similar because we're human. Um, and this is why um, the eye contact works, you know, and how we come across works and the genuineness of how we need to represent ourselves because no one is going to want to continue a relationship with us if they sense the fakeness no, or the right. wanting something. Um, so, so you best be yes, upfront about that. Is it best saying to somebody, I want to get in contact with you because... X, Y, and Z, or do you not want to put that all on the table to uh, search for them? It depends on the situation. I, I, yeah, I, I would personally put it on the table. Okay. Because why, why would I want to meet Julia or to meet you, for instance, unless I, I had some value that I understood? Right. My demand and my time pressure is huge. So at least helping me understand what the agenda is allows me to make some decisions. But if you don't know, for example, like immediately you might not know that there's a mutual benefit, the main thing is that both parties walk away with a reason to want to connect. So it's got to be qualified, okay. Okay. right, rather than take, take, take. And that's about making sure that you're likeable. Well, getting likeable, yes, then getting agreement, having a connection. Okay. You know, and how do you finish it? How do you normally well, finish these meetings? Is it very critical to get the business card so or a phone is, number? Okay, this is the big problem. The reason networking has such a dirty connotation in this country yes. is because people are running around trying to collect business cards. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. And at the end of the day, even if I've got a stack of business cards, it doesn't mean anything because I have no relationships. Right. Okay. So I need to narrow it down, get that plan, get that strategy of where I'm going, what I'm doing, and then I need to have a reason to follow up. And by the way, our research at the Business Networking Academy has shown that 71% of people don't follow up right. when they meet them. Follow up is just so you have to, pick up. to follow up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're going, to have to, we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. Thank you both for joining me. I'm being given the wrap. Now, after a short break, we are going to come back to the story of a whiskey entrepreneur and find out what to do when your application is followed by the dreaded silent treatment. Follow up.